Well, thank you. And I think uh, we've got somebody here in the audience that really wants to ask you a question. Uh, Joe Mitchell's got a question for you. Hi, Joe. Hey, Mr. President. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Clearly, it's no secret that our country is in chaos. The world is in chaos. What happened with Yemen and the missile strikes the last few days, Ukraine, Palestine. We don't even know where the Secretary of Defense is right now. Are we on the brink of World War III? I think we're the closest that we've ever been. And, you know, Joe, this won't be a regular war. This is not going to be, as I say, army tanks running back and forth, shooting each other. These are weapons of mass destruction, the likes of which nobody's ever seen. I've seen. I've seen them. And uh, this is obliteration. This is not a world war like we are used to. World War I, World War II were terrible, horrible. Uh, this is uh, so much bigger than that. This is you know, at, like annihilation. And we have people that can't put two sentences together. The, our president can't speak. He can't speak a full sentence. And he's negotiating with Putin and he's negotiating with President Xi of China who's very tough and very smart. You know, I say that, and the media says, oh, you called him smart. Yeah, he's smart. He's very smart. He controls 1.4 billion people with an iron fist. I'd say that's smart. And he's a guy who uh, loves China. And these are people that love their country, or certainly uh, whether they love their country or not, they want to make their country great again, right? Like we're doing. We were doing things at this country that nobody's ever seen. Then COVID came in. We did a great job with that, but never got the respect for the job we did with COVID. Nobody knew what it was. All over the world, it was ripping countries apart. The damage China did, and I always said it came from Wuhan, and it did. It came from Wuhan, and uh, it, it was the damage done to this world $61 trillion, they figure. That's more than China has. That's more than everybody has put together. $61 trillion in damage. I don't know if you've ever heard that number, but that's, wow. and it's probably a relatively accurate number. They, you know, they really put the world back many, many years, what they've done. And uh, it's so sad to see that. But nobody's ever done the job. You know, we rebuilt the military. We gave the largest tax cuts in history. We gave the largest regulation cuts in history. Even from a health standpoint, right to try. We did right to try. That space age stuff. We have the best labs, the best doctors in the world. And we would have things that won't come out for four or five or six years. They won't be approved. And I got it done. And they've been trying to get that done for 54 years. I got it done. And it saved thousands and thousands of lives. You know, nobody wanted it. The health companies didn't want it. The labs didn't want it. The doctors didn't want it. And the country didn't want it because everybody felt they were going to have liability. I got everybody in a room. The insurance companies didn't want it. I got them in a room. I said, look, the patient's going to sign. No liability to anybody. And they were willing to do that. And we've saved thousands and thousands of lives. And you know, it's shown in this many cases that the drugs really work. You know, the drug companies didn't want it because they didn't want to take terminally ill people. The people that were terminal, and it was incredible because they'd say for years, we don't want to take a chance because if they get sick, I said, they're terminal. You know, it's like that these are really sick people. These are people that will be dead. They are dying and they will have the right to use it. And they have had, and we've saved thousands and thousands of lives. And actually it's been the opposite effect. Some of these drugs are so good that it actually proved that they were good as opposed to, you know, the liability factor that the drugs co drug companies were worried about. So we're very proud of uh, everything we did. We're the greatest economy in the history of our country. And again, the biggest tax cuts in history, uh, and that is substantially bigger than Ronald Reagan's tax cuts, and he did it. now. The Democrats want to have that elapse. You know, it expires relatively soon. And that was a five-year deal. It expires. And if that's allowed to expire, your, tax, your taxes are going to go up at numbers that nobody, the biggest tax increase in history. And it'll also be very bad for the economy of, you know, for the, for the country. You know, it's interesting. When I cut the taxes to that tremendous extent, including for businesses, Everybody said, oh, wow, it's not going to be income. We're taking much more income now than we did before with the higher tax rates. If they allow that to expire, which they'd like to do, I believe, I, th I think they have a tremendous liability because even politically, why would you vote for somebody that's going to raise your taxes by 75 percent? And that's what you're going to be doing. If you vote for crooked Joe Biden and he's crooked as you can be, there's never been a president more crooked than this guy. If you vote for him and remember this. 
He got a lot of money from China. He got a lot of money from Ukraine. He got a lot of money from Russia. Do you remember during the debate when I said, how come you got three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife? And Chris Wallace wouldn't let me ask that question. He said, well, I have to stop you. What is that? Well, that's become a very big subject. Why did he get it? And he can't answer why he got it. But we have sort of a Manchurian candidate in there. He's a, uh, he's a guy who's very compromised, in my opinion. And that's why China is getting away with murder. You know, China now is not doing well because of my tariffs. They cannot take the tariffs off because it's so much money coming into our country that they can't really justify taking the tariffs off. And they were, I took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. Hundreds of billions. No other president ever took in 10 cents. And I got along great with President Xi until COVID. That was a step too far. I couldn't do it. But I have, you know, I had a great relationship with him. But he was not thrilled with the tariffs. But we took in hundreds of billions of dollars. Think of it. And no other president ever took in not 10 cents. And we were really rocking and rolling. And then this guy comes into office and it's so bad. And we're a laughing stock as a country. As you know, we're a laughing stock all over the world. Very sad. Thank you, Joe. Yeah.